Hey guys, it's Manny from Vegan Rock Climbing. Welcome back to the channel. In today's episode, I want to investigate another very important rock climbing technique. Today's subject, switching feet. The first part of this video is going to be about what switching feet actually means and the various ways in which a foot switch can be performed. In the second part I will try to explain why we need this technique in general and I also want to give you some specific examples where switching feet can be required. Let's get into it. A foot switch has to occur when we want to step on a certain foothold which is already occupied by our other foot. It's really that simple. But most climbers, including myself until recently, are not aware that at least in theory there are three different ways how we can do that. First we've got the standard, classy, very controlled version where we just step besides the foot which is already loading the foothold until we let this one go. The advantages of this method are that it's relatively precise and it doesn't cost much energy in the fingers because at least one foot is relieving the hands during the whole process. The disadvantages are that it's relatively slow, especially if the involved foothold is quite small and precision is necessary. Apart from that, this method is restricted to footholds which are big enough to fit two climbing shoe tips on it and especially on harder problems this is not always the case. The second version is a more dynamic one. Here the climber performs a quick little jump in order to release the target foothold, making it available for the other foot which is loading it right afterwards. The advantages of this method are number one, it's very fast, in fact it's the fastest of all methods and number two, it's very precise when it's done right, meaning that it can be performed on footholds which are barely big enough to fit one climbing shoe tip on them. The disadvantage is that although it's fast, it costs some energy in the forearms because for a moment the climber has no support from his feet. It should be mentioned that the negative effects that arise from that can be limited with proper timing and precision. For the sake of completion I would like to show you one more way how to switch feet which I just discovered recently and this one involves friction. Here's the workflow. First the free foot has to step on friction above the target foothold. Subsequently the second foot joins by stepping besides the first one on friction as well. And thirdly, finally, the first one steps down on the actual foothold. The single advantage of this method is that it can be performed on quite small footholds, meaning that it's very precise. However, there are a couple of disadvantages. First of all, it's extremely slow because all the stepping around takes a lot of time. Also, it puts a lot of weight on your fingers due to unideal loading direction. As we learn in this episode, friction-based stepping goes at the expense of proper handhold loading direction. And thirdly, this method is limited to terrain where friction-based stepping is possible flat walls with a rough surface, but even there I would probably prefer the dynamic version because it's so much faster. But what about overhangs for example? That's a whole area of climbs where this method has probably no relevance. Bottom line, there must be a reason why I didn't know about this for over 8 years of climbing. So now that we know what it is and how it can be performed, I want to show you in which situations switching feet might be necessary. The first thing that comes to my mind would be climbs, which have only a small number of footholds in general. Obviously, if there is only few footholds available, you will have to perform a foot switch sooner or later if you want to keep your feet at the wall. That being said, the second thing would be if the climber is confronted with footholds which are far apart and a lot to the side of the actual climbing line. Let's take a look at this climb. I can help myself with some simple cross steps to perform these moves quite efficiently because the footholds are not far apart. On the contrary, this problem here, although exhibiting the same pattern, contains footholds which are more far apart. As you can see, if I want to perform these moves efficiently in a backstep like fashion as before, I have to switch feet a lot. There is also another way how to deal with this problem, but that's going to be a subject of another video. Note that you can increase your range of accessible footholds by improving your flexibility in the hip and leg department. The final example that I want to give you here will be traversing, especially when footholds are limited. While a lot of simple cross steps can be performed when traversing over an abundance of footholds, for example when warming up, 
you basically have to switch feet when the number of footholds decreases, as you can see in this comparison. And this leads me also to my suggestion when it comes to training precision and timing of switching feet. Just look for a nice traverse and limit your footholds. Try to climb this traverse and incorporate all the different methods of switching feet that we've mentioned before. And if you need a bigger challenge, just try the same thing in the overhang. And that's already it for this technique episode. I hope you learned something you didn't know already. If you did, please like, share, subscribe and don't forget to tell me your opinion in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye!